Star Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hi everybody, it's Shar and Sunny, and it's 2017, the spring of 2017. And are you a dreamer? Are you a daydreamer? Are you a night dreamer? Do you remember your dreams? Some people don't remember their dreams. I've always felt that dreams are psychological and also uh, clairvoyant, like that we see, can see the future in our dreams. Well, I have an amazing expert on today. Her name's Lori Lowenberg. She's been on the show before. She's a dream analyst. And um, because it went so well the last time, I have all our girls back together. We have Christy Ferris, we have Sonia Marie, and we have Michelle Eben. And so Michelle is our touch therapy expert. What are you doing, Sonny? Sonny's kissing me in, <laughs> in my cleavage. It, it, she's, he's, she's, she's our um, touch therapy expert and healer. And Sonia Marie is an amazing astrologer. Uh, and and also intuitive. And then we have Christy Ferris, who's a famous actress, and she's all over the place. Where are you? Uh, my newest show is, uh, it's on TV One. It's mm -hmm. called Media, and it should probably air either the summer, sometime the end of this year. I'm somewhere around in there, but okay. I'm excited. That's so great. And, in you know, Christy's always our, pers our go-to person who's like you guys at home, the viewers, who ask the questions that you're thinking, who, uh, who, who, who try to figure out what all the spiritual stuff is about for the lay person. And even though she's really more intuitive and more spiritual than more, most people I know, but that's her job. She's helping yeah. host, and we're, we're, we're all hosting today. And we've got Lori at home, and Lori Lohenberg has uh, been on Dr. Oz. The Where else have you been? The the Today Show, my God. Yeah, and, The View, Good Morning America, Steve Harvey. Yeah, Fox, and you're a regular on Dr. Oz, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, you were on Steve Harvey, too? That's fantastic. Mm -hmm, well, a couple times, yeah. Well, this is your show today, so... Oh, how funny. <laughs> Take it away, and everybody has a dream that they're going to give to you. And who wants to be first? I'll go. go. I'll okay. go because I have a dream, Lori, and I've read a little bit about dreams. So I feel like the dream I have is very common. But I'm going to set the stage for so ever since I was three years old, I have had teeth problems. Okay, so I had my two teeth pulled when I when they just came out, so I didn't have two front teeth for um, until my adult teeth grew in. So, you know, I used to say, all I want for Christmas wow, is my, my two, two front teeth. teeth. I was yeah. thinking that. And then I had cavities. I had teeth pulled. I had braces. So my dream that I have every week is um, it's either my teeth are crumbling, literally crumbling, or falling out. Now, here's the question, though. My teeth are crumbling. Like a couple they months are? ago, these two, no. one crumbled. They fixed it, and just the uh, last week, this one crumbled again, and I just had to get a permanent retainer. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd love to know the, what the dream means, but also, is this just because I'm, I have so many teeth Wait, issues? Before you answer, eating. what do you mean crumbled? Like it, it chipped or? It just, the pressure of the bottom teeth just. Like I, fell out? I was talking, and all of a sudden I was like, close it in my mouth, and it was the back of the tooth. And they fixed it, and then it happened again. Does so it break down to pieces? Well, do you have a something? veneer? Do you have a the veneer or a cap? Part fell off. Do you have the a tongue. veneer or um, a cap? Yeah, they I had to put a composite on, so it is my tooth, but it's all fixed, and they have the permanent retainer. I mean, they wow. may look okay, but 
It's, it's been a beautiful. I mean, the teeth are gorgeous. She's got gorgeous. Thank oh, but, you, but, but how many not. of you guys? Here, <laughs> not. But how many of you guys here have had dreams that your teeth are falling out? Uh, hello. Me. Okay. I haven't. You oh, haven't? No. You are. What really? Sunny, you haven't? No. Lori, what does it mean? Well, you know, I kind of believe that about you. Okay, so Why? the teeth dream <laughs> is really common. Uh, probably one of the top ten dreams that most of us get. Most often, the teeth dream, and, and there's all kinds of different variations to the teeth dream. Teeth are falling out, they're crumbling, or, or they're just hanging by a vein, and you got to yank it out. Um, most of the time, the teeth dream can be connected to the way you've been communicating lately. If your teeth are falling out in a dream, that's a good indication you've allowed something out of your mouth that you shouldn't have said. You were loose with your speech. You were oh, gossiping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's something not yeah. thinking about at first. <laughs> okay. Something you wish you could put back in. Um, when your teeth crumble or crack, that's connected to loose, uh, weak speech, meaning you maybe you didn't hold up your end of an argument, or maybe you didn't get your point across uh -huh. strong enough. Um, if you're spitting your teeth out into your hand, that's connected to the need to say something, to spit it out already, we tend to say, when there's something we need to speak up about. But Michelle, you are a very special case. That's so. <laughs> uh, because you have <laughs> had teeth issues your whole life. Yeah. So the best way for you to figure out what's causing the dream is to pay attention to what happened in your life the day before. So if you get the dream tonight, for example, look at what happened today. Did you say something you wish you hadn't said or that you could have said better? Or did something happen that made you feel insecure or that brings back the way you felt when you were having your teeth issues? I would imagine that made you feel like uh, insecure or worried about how people looked at you, yeah. having to go without front yeah. teeth for so long. Did something happen the day before that made you feel the same way, subconscious? Oh, and yeah. so that's that's really the key to connecting the dots between your dream is seeing if you can find something the day before that makes you feel the same way you felt in your dream. Mm, wow. Wow. wow, so it's all connected to way back, like deep-seated psychological issues. Yeah, I think that today. for you, you're you're a very special case. <laughs> it could definitely be connected to, you know, feeling self-conscious. Something made you feel self-conscious that brought back those same memories from when you were growing up. Wow. Okay. Oh, All right. Thank you. So good. I just need to write down my dreams, I guess, when I wake up. You have. You must. It's the best thing you can ever okay. do for yourself. You document your dreams along with your day. Okay. You know, keep a, a dream journal in tandem with a day journal. So you can connect the dots between what happens in your dreams and what happened the day before. It's really one of the best things you can ever do for yourself. Okay. Well, I know you always say to, like, when you wake up, to kind of lay there for a few minutes so that the dreams sort of come to you so you can write it down. But what happens when you have to get up at, say, 5.30, your alarm goes off at 5.30? You can't lay there. So is that Right. Just... So I suggest setting your alarm just five minutes early. So you have that three to five minutes where you can lay there. And at the very least, you know, because most of us don't have time in the morning to write down our dreams, just record it to your phone or just say a few things that will help you remember it later when you do have the time to write it down. Okay. So the more you do this every morning, the stronger your dream, your dream recall will get. It's like a muscle. You know, the more you work it, the stronger it's going to get. And, and in no time, it'll be as normal as brushing your teeth every morning. You know, Lori, I have a friend who never remembers his dream unless they're prophetic, unless they're like psychic. Interesting. So how frequent are those? Not a lot, but what? It's the only time he remembers them. Well, okay, so that's interesting, but it's also kind of a bummer because he's probably missing out on a lot of really good stuff. Right. You know, our, our dreams can be amazing, and they, we can come up with the best ideas when we're dreaming, you know, we have a lot of things in our culture, thanks to people who pay attention to their dreams. Like for example, Google, the search engine, came to Larry Page in a dream. It did? You know, the idea for it, yeah. Um, the movie Avatar and Terminator, um, all these amazing things are because people pay attention to their dreams. So I would tell your friend to start keeping a journal by his bedside. Okay. So that he has it ready for when he does remember that dream. And then he has to give himself that three to five minutes in the morning of lying still to let the dreams come back to him. And even if all he remembers is a feeling or just, I just remember someone wearing red lipstick, that's great. Write that down. 
Okay. It's the more he does it, the stronger it'll get. Thank you. It's interesting that you would say about the whole Google situation because mm -hmm. uh, when I usually like the uh, I'm writing a book and a lot of the ideas they do not come during the day. They come at like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Can I just make you one know? point. <laughs> yes. I predicted that she was writing a book, and I want you to know when you see this. I didn't know about the book, but when I read for her. It was before we taped this, just yes. so you know. Yes, yes. And so it's it's also a reminder to make sure that I, I, com I complete it. But I remember <laughs> <laughs> at like 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, this, this idea was like God was like, okay, I want you to start working with young actors in the Atlanta area. And I was like, no, I don't have time. And I couldn't go back to sleep. So I was like, fine, I'll get on Facebook. And when I went on Facebook, I had three students, the people that reached out and said, will you be my teacher? And in a week wow. I had 20. Wow. But, it was, but it came at two o'clock in the morning. I just woke up and I was like, what? Right. I'm not doing that. I'm trying <laughs> to go back to sleep, you know? But then, and that's where the book, the book ended up coming out of that. Um, so that's one thing. But I do have, I do have one, a dream that, does reoccur. I don't, I don't know if I've had it recently, but it is basically I graduated from college. Everything worked out great. And then out of the blue, I get a phone call from my high school that says you did you failed this class. You I have did the that. same what? dream. Oh my God. And I'm like, I have I to finish this. So now I have to go back to high school. Oh, and sweet. I have the same dream. <laughs> OK, so great. Maybe you can solve this for the both of us, please. I get it too. <laughs> you have it too, Lori? Yeah, I have to do like either one year of high school over or sometimes all four years. Frustrating. <laughs> I hate yes, it. I've never had that dream. I could say really? that. Really? Sure. Okay. That's a, <laughs> what, what does it mean? mean? Okay, so back to school dreams and like the teeth dream, there's all kinds of variations to the back at school dream. Um, and most often the back at school dream will be connected to something that's going on in your job or your career. Mm. Because school is your first job and it's where you learn the dynamics of what you need, you know, for your life and your job. You got to be on time. You need to be prepared. You're always learning something new. You want to be liked and fit in. You're being tested and judged and you want to excel and keep moving up to the next level. So when you get the dream where you have to go back and do something all over again, you'll find that's most often connected to something going on in your career where you have to prove yourself. Even though you know you've got what it takes, you've got the talent, you've got the skills, something's going on where you have to prove it to others. So it feels like just doing it all over again. So you may get this, Christy, whenever you have an audition and you know you got it, yeah. but you got to prove it. That is true. Well, there we go. You know, um, I did flunk government in 12th grade. Oh, goodness. Oh. <laughs> I flunked Spanish you? in the 12th grade. You, you flunked Spanish, Spanish too. And, okay. And so... I always have that the principal opinion. called my mom and said, Mrs. Margolis, Charlene is never going to pass government. We're just going to pass her anyway because she'll be here forever if we don't. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Could that be part of it? Well, it could be. So what you want to do is ask yourself, you know, examine how did that make you feel? Did it make you feel like you weren't good enough? Did it make you feel shamed? You know, how did that feel? What went through your head? What did you think of yourself when that happened? And then see if you can connect that same feeling to something going on right now. Whenever you get that dream, is something wow. going on now that makes you feel that same way when you didn't pass. That's yeah. profound. Mm -hmm. That is profound. Because I because obviously we carry things with us. You know, when we go through life, all our different stages of life, all our different experiences, certain things impact us and stay with us, and the subconscious will hold on to it. And will borrow hmm. from that experience to Which, kind of remind you of something that's going on now. And say, right. here's another lesson you didn't okay. learn it the first time. But so she got, got her college degree. I got my college degree. I don't know how, but I got a teaching degree, and she got her college degree. Right. So, but, but I, but I can I I. I <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure where it relates to the college portion of things, but I do, I mean, because I'm auditioning every day. Oh, and gee. So, you know, and, and sometimes you'll have two a day, and sometimes you'll be so prepared, and you go into the audition, and it just doesn't work right. And mm. you're like, no, this was my, this was it. 
you know, and so I can, I'm now curious to know, and obviously I'll look at it in the future of, do I get these dreams when I have an audition or? Yeah, you, know, you gotta look at the day before. There's always gonna be a connection, always. Um, to what happens in your dream at night, to what happened the day before. Something oh, you talked man. about, something that affected you, something that happened, something that was on your mind. So you may get it, you know, when maybe you feel a little more advanced mm -hmm. than other people that are auditioning. Maybe you have more under your belt. Mm -hmm. And so that could be your college, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But yet maybe you're not feeling quite good enough that particular day. And so you have to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to really impress. I you feel like that you have one time. Can I <laughs> say one uh, that, one yeah. thing about just to back up for a second? When you said that the man woke up and he he discovered Google and yeah, and you have had about your book and mm -hmm. all that. I always tell my students that if you wake up at two or three in the morning and you get a feeling about something, write it down because that's sometimes the only time our mind is is quiet enough that our spirit guides can give us information to help us with our own lives. Yeah. I call it. That's hundred percent true. And that's why our dreams are so helpful and powerful and mm -hmm. intuitive because, you know, think about it. When you go to sleep at night, you turn off the lights, you turn off the TV, you close your eyes, you turn off the outside world. That's off. That's no more distractions. Mm -hmm. And then you start going deeper and deeper into yourself. So you're kind of having to face yourself and your issues because you don't have anything to distract you. So anything that you ignored during the day or lied to yourself about during the day or just tried to put aside during the day, it's going to come up to the surface while you're dreaming and say, hey, guess what? We get to work on this now because you ignored us during the day. Wow. So why do you have crazy dreams when you drink tequila? Uh -oh. Why do I have crazy dreams? <laughs> Or when you know, when you drink, when you drink. When you drink, you're not going to dream as much because you're going to go right into the deep delta sleep and you're going to skip through some of that good REM sleep. You're not going to remember your dreams as well. You're not going to get enough dream time. Um, and also you may wake up in the middle of the night and not be able to go back to sleep. You know, I have something similar to that too. When I drink, I, I have angry dreams. And what I remember in studying is that um, your liver is, um, harbors anger so your liver is actually working between and you know this right between yeah. like three and five in the morning that's when the liver is filtering mm -hmm. filtering itself out oh. so if it's filtering out a whole bunch of alcohol and toxins and which is not used to and that anger that you've been harboring there energetically comes up it could go to the subconscious mind and have those I, I'm, right. I'm always shooting and banging up after I drink all right. it's like dreams. really yeah. crazy like dreams. fighting so, and so well, I, I okay. So this one, I, I'm, I really have no idea why this happens. I will, if I don't wake up. So if I wake up, let's say it's five o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning or even you know later, if I don't get up and I try to go back to sleep, mm -hmm. I start having angry dreams, like just like really like I'm fighting someone or mad at somebody or I hate my mom or I hate my best friend who I absolutely love, like all of a sudden I get, so I'm like, oh, forget it, let me just get up. You know, I'm trying to cancel, cancel, and I'll get up because nothing happened that would make me get angry. But if I don't get up, I will start having like these angry dreams like I'm ready to fight someone. Let's talk about this, Christy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm nervous about bringing it up. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> Okay, so the anger, any kind of emotion you experience in a dream or emotion you wake up with from a dream is a direct connection to that same emotion caused by something in waking life. In what life? Waking. In waking, in your real life, in your waking life. Okay. Okay, that being said, is there anything maybe from your past that you're angry about that you never dealt with? that perhaps your subconscious mind is trying to bring to the surface and help you process. I mean, I'm sure there's something, but it's, sh you know, I'll wake up happy, but if I try to go back to sleep, it'll, it'll, it just, 
I don't know why that happens. So well, what sort me, of things do you fight about in the dream? Do you remember anything you're saying or anything you're mad about? I mean, usually at the end of this, the dream, if I don't hurry up and get up, then I will, the relationship is over. I don't ever want to talk to you ever again. And I don't care who it is. It could be like my best friend who I love and adore. And I mean, we, I mean, she's like, we're like this, but I will have this angry dream and I will, and everyone gets cut off. I abandon everyone. So okay. I, so I have abandonment issues, which I, I do. Turn, so. Okay. So that's something, but also I want you to turn it on yourself mm -hmm. because a lot of times the people in our dream, even if we deal with them frequently in real life, they're going to symbolize a part of ourselves. So your best friend in your dream may actually symbolize the part of you that is and should be a friend to yourself. Mm. So is there anything you're mad at yourself about where maybe you're not being good enough to yourself or being a good friend to yourself? Well, that, I'm sure that that's <laughs> probably true too. Aww. I know, it probably is true. And you know, so so I have to figure that about that about my parents too because I do that with my mm. parents and if I'm in a relationship or something like that, I'll do the same thing out of the blue. I'll just be like, ah, it's over. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to talk to you again. But you're saying it could be eternal, internal. Point it back at you. What are you mad at yourself about that particular moment in time? Okay, I will look at that and write that down and get back to you when we do another oh, show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I have a very interesting dream. What? I, and this just happened the other day, Lori. I, actually, I love Lori. And I, I, I refrain from emailing her my dreams. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so hard. I'll wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I need to call Lori. I need to email Lori. So every once in a while, I'll but bombard we, her. We need to know we always have a chain going, all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. Because I would try to refrain from yeah. like, contacting yeah. you guys. I'd be like, um, I have a little... Okay, but right. yeah. <laughs> but Lori, this one stumped me the other day. I'm walking down the street in the middle of the street with white on. And nobody else is on the street. No cars are moving, no patrons, no nothing. But I turn around to look behind me and the asphalt is starting to peel off of the earth. Oh. And from behind the as asphalt, underneath it, are these black figures. They're not like people, but they're just like shapes of people in black. And they start to run after me. So I'm running down the street and I'm hauling ass down the street. I'm going, I'm going, going. Next thing you know, boom, I appear in this mansion, which is my house. And it's beautiful, like it's laid. It's just wow. wonderful, like 20 rooms and stuff. And there's nobody in the house but children. They're all kids just laid out. They're playing Xbox. They're, they're drinking. They're eating. They're laughing. They're having a great time. And I look out the window, and here comes the black figures running at, towards the, like zombies almost, but not wow. really, running towards the building, towards my house. So I tell all the kids to get on the ground. <laughs> I don't know what the heck yeah, I'm and then what? about. I tell the kids to get on the ground, and they're happily getting on the ground. If they're not alarmed, I'm the only one alarmed, right? And I press a button, and these uh, the, the metal windows just start to clamor down, like, bam! Like, all the windows in the house, doom, 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 like, one after the other after the other. The, the windows are covered with steel, and that's that. So you're safe? Okay. You're not, you I'm are safe. safe. You are I'm safe. safe. Okay. Lori. Okay, so this is kind of like Night of the Living Dead. I know. <laughs> it is. Excuse but me. more like Night of the Living Street. <laughs> Night of Living Yonkers. <laughs> okay, so when did you have the dream? About uh, about three, four days ago. Okay, so good. We should be able to connect it to something that was going on in your life three or four days Hopefully. ago. Now, <laughs> I, if I recall, you mentioned that you like to think of yourself as having a window like your psychic window, right? you'll keep it open more than others, perhaps. Right. In this dream, you slam down all the windows. So did anything happen a few days ago where you felt the need to close down and not open up to either someone in particular or something? Um, yeah, actually. Uh, wow. Yep. <laughs> she doesn't want to tell us what it is. We want to hear about it. We want to hear about it. Well, it's just that... Um, you don't have to name names. No, 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 I will not. But um, <laughs> I believe... Well, okay. Longer story short, 
Venus is retrograde. So what happens when Venus is in retrograde, old lovers come back. So I think I'm, sh I'm shutting down psychically old lovers because I can feel them pulling on my energy. Mm. And it's bothersome. Mm -hmm. Was it's someone trying to get in touch with you? In the ethers, man. Not, I mean, because I blocked them on all social media and all. I mean, right. So I feel psychically. like that. Yeah, in the ethers, I feel psychically. I feel like they're they're nudging me. I'm like, why am I thinking mm -hmm. about you? Like, leave me but alone. Is that, is that what happens in Venus retrograde? Oftentimes. Oh well, mm -hmm. that old lovers come back. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, that's so why I'm making sure we get a call last night. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle, the married woman, yes, yes. did one of your old boyfriends come uh -oh, back? Oh, it's a whole yes, other show now. They all come oh, back. Wait, oh, recently. wait, wait, wait. How many hikes did we take at Fryman talking about every single one of your old boyfriends? Yeah, you know everything. You know it all. But yeah, you know the one that I'm thinking of. I know. You know. I know. The one that starts with a C? Oh, how did I know that? Oh my God, yeah. Because I called him a really weird name, which yes. I can't stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just so it's in the air. Yeah. Yes, in the air. Oh, that makes sense. And she's married with three kids. Yeah. But I'm so glad oh, you yeah. said that. You this really helped me. In the well, dream, about... you were wearing white. Say it again. Because that's the color of new beginnings. Oh, you oh, were trying right. to surround yourself with. No, I have to have a new beginning. I have to start over. I can't let. And also, that's why these lovers are coming out from under the street because that's the your old path your old direction oh. and the the past you've swept under the rug so to speak right and they keep coming at me so what what about the children what do the children represent in the and why is the house so big well okay houses and dreams are going to symbolize the self your state of mind uh, the dwelling place of your soul. So it's wonderful that your house is such a big, gorgeous mansion because this is your view of yourself. You know, you're you're fabulous. Isn't you there know, something in the Bible about the many mansions or something? I don't, I don't know about yeah. that. Okay, go on. I'm sorry. Interrupt. Okay, and so the children are a reminder that you have to take care of you. You have to nurture and care for yourself. Wow. And you have to allow yourself to have mm -hmm. fun and be carefree. Mm -hmm. And look at life as you know your playground. Right, because wow. they were not bothered. <laughs> they were not bothered. People, they didn't care you know, if bring you down. Yeah, they didn't care if the zombie black men were coming. <laughs> yeah. I'm not black men. <laughs> is, is it also her innocence? Is it also her innocence? Her innocence? Yeah, I'm sure that a lot of these old lovers probably took her innocence. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God! That's a whole nother well, story. That's another story. show. <laughs> that's another show. <laughs> well, at least now I know why I made all those phone calls. Because I was—I mean, not phone calls. I was texting all of them. Hey, I just wanted to call and say hi, or text oh and say hi. God. But that's really good because I just thought I was hormonal. Okay, you know I mean? so okay, so that's let's know. for the viewers at home. Uh, we're taping this on uh, on uh, March seventeenth, two thousand seventeen. So. That when did Venus go what crazy? Venus goes retrograde. Well, it started March fourth, two thousand seventeen, and it goes to April fifteenth. Oh. Okay, two thousand seventeen. Okay. Oh God, it's <laughs> a long time. Well, actually, it's it's really all about review. Whenever any planet goes retrograde, it's about review, reevaluate. So it's not to say get back with them. No. Okay, don't have any bottles around, no nothing that can distract you from slipping back into, you know. It's just about, hey, this is why we didn't work. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we could work if we did X, Y, and Z and changed it. Even your current relationships, you reevaluate. You right. say, you know, where, do you, where have you been? You've been working so much. I haven't seen you. We haven't hugged. We haven't kissed. Like, that type of thing. So, Christy, no. don't, do we have some callers or viewers that... I do, yeah. I actually have some... <laughs> I have a couple of them actually, okay. which I think were really good. Um, and this happens to me, so this is going to be great. I'm getting all my answers. I mean, my questions answered. Okay, so this is Carl from Phoenix, Arizona. Says, sometimes I get these really intense dreams of people I haven't seen in decades, and then the next day I receive a phone call from them or from someone very close to them. How does this happen? Hmm, okay, so kind of like how Shar was. Uh, mentioning in the intro of the show, dreams aren't just psychological, they can also be, well, psychic. They can kind of give us a glimpse into 
what's to come or what's going on outside our own realm. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because when we're dreaming, when we enter REM sleep, the brain starts to work differently. Certain parts of the brain go dormant, like the prefrontal cortex, while other parts of the brain become very active, like the amygdala, the, the emotional center of the brain. So that's why dreams also seem very weird um, because you're thinking differently because your brain's working differently. And then this also will open us up to be able to receive dreams from the departed messages from the departed in our dreams and also to pick up on, um, you know, things that are about to happen. And then, you know, you've got to start thinking about, well, is time really linear and you know, that's a whole different discussion, but yeah, your, your brain is, is when you're dreaming, it's like a different radio station that you're tuned into. Oh, that's okay. fascinating. Um, yeah. I'm going to do one because I know we have several questions, but let me just do one more. Okay. Um, so we have Michelle from North, uh, North Hollywood, California, wants to know if there are any specific tricks you can do before bed to help control or determine the actual content of your dream. Ooh, good question. I pick the ones I deal with all the time. So Wow. Well, the answer is <laughs> yes, you can. It's actually called dream incubation, and it's something that, like the ancient Romans used to do this, dream incubation. I like to call it dreaming on demand. I've kind of updated it. Um, so basically what you can do is anything from, you know, using your dreams to get an answer to an issue you're dealing with or to have fun and have a visit from someone like, you know, Donald Sutherland, don't judge. <laughs> you can program <laughs> yourself to dream about what you want. So what you want to do is kind of obsess about it all day long. Think about either that person you want to dream about or that scenario you want to dream about or the issue you want your dream to help you with. Obsess about it. Think about it all day long. So we tend to dream about what we think about the most. Mm -hmm. And then at bedtime, go ahead and write out how you'd like the dream to happen. You know, if you want a fantasy or write about the person you want to dream about or write about the issue you want help with. Write it out. Get it out of your system, onto your paper. And then when you turn out your light and you lay down and go to sleep, continue to obsess about it. And then when you wake up, you want to make sure you can remember the dream that you got. So you have to stay still as soon as you wake up. Don't roll over. Stay in the same position you woke up in. Quiet your mind. Don't think about what you have to do today. Give yourself three to five minutes of quiet, still time and let that dream come back to you. Now, this isn't guaranteed that it's going to happen but it dramatically raises your odds. And wait, the wait, wait. more so you gives do us, this, it gives us answers. your chance you'll get a, the dream you want. It gives us answers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can use your dream. Yeah, if you're okay, having a I'm terrible right now. issue I'm with your mother in I'll write about it. <laughs> wow. Right, you know what I was gonna show you guys? There what? are two points to help you sleep and to help turn your brain. They're actually acupressure points wow. on your oh. ankle. They're just below your, um, I'm gonna show you right here. They're called, they're called joyful sleep and calm sleep, right here. And press them right before you go to bed. And Chinese acupuncturists will put needles right here and here. And it can help you sleep better. And it could probably help your brain get into that mode quicker, the REM mode. Mm. Could, could, so you, could the people at home see that? Five there to ten go. seconds. No, do it, could we, will you do it again? Five to ten time. seconds. Do you want yeah. my foot? Yeah, you want my, here. No, okay, I do got it, my foot. You need to do it higher, though. All right, so check it out. Okay, you okay there you go. Right, so, oh, you see the bottom of my foot. Okay, it's this. Well, no, 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 you come yeah. you get in the thing. <laughs> okay, wait. All right, so this is called, these are two acupressure points called joyful sleep, and this is called calm sleep. Those are the actual traditional Chinese medicine names. You just press them like it's right in the hollow between this ankle bone and the back of your, um, th the back of your ankle here, ankle. right here, ankle, and press firmly and make small circles. Five to ten seconds is all you have to do on both feet before you go to bed, and that's supposed to help, help improve your sleep. Wow! So do that. Maybe it'll help remember your dreams. Can it? Can it? Can I ask? Uh, I have a question yeah. for you. Um, so. Is there, like, do shared dreams really work? And if it does work, how do I get someone else to share a dream with me? Is that real? Well, shared dreaming usually happens unexpectedly. Like when you and your mom have the same dream or a very similar dream on the same night, or you and your boyfriend or your husband, or you and your best friend, it usually happens to people that are very close. And the reason why it happens is because the two of you are dealing with the same issue 
And because you're so close, your subconscious is going to respond to that issue in a very in the same or similar fashion, therefore having a same or similar dream. Mm -hmm. And it actually happens a lot more than we think. But the problem is that most of us don't remember our dreams or report our dreams. So, you know, if people would just start giving more attention to this very powerful part of themselves and document it every morning, I think we would be amazed at the, at the kind of things we're all dreaming. You know, yeah. and the answers that we're all getting that we're ignoring. Yeah, because that we could we could come up with helping heal the universe if we all work together. That's true. Amen. And I, and I also too, I mean, because I do believe a, a lot of the things that I've I've manifested in my life was me visualizing and like going through and even like this show that I'm that I just that I have now. I literally was like visualizing every day and I make things passwords and you know even when I took my trip to Europe I was like somebody's gonna fly me to Europe and I'm gonna you know and they did because yeah. I just kept thinking and manifesting and dreaming about being in Paris and and that's what happened somebody right. flew me down there oh, wow mm -hmm. yeah so yeah that's good thank you for uh, answering that question for me I really yeah I dreamed about Char last night yeah. you, you did you, you had a dream about me was I skinny <laughs> <laughs> you looked fabulous. <laughs> but you also made these really wonderful cookies. Oh, oh, that's crazy. And I asked you what they were called, and all you said was... <laughs> well, you want to know something? Yes. I am known for making chocolate chip cookies. Whenever I do my retreats, whenever I have family come or whatever, I always make chocolate chip cookies, and I make oh them... I, I don't follow the recipe. I make them a certain way, and they're delicious. See, now you have to send some to me. And, well, okay, but you know, <laughs> no, 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 you're coming. You're gonna come because we're all gonna meet up in Palm Springs eventually, and I'm gonna make the cookies and bring them. Yes. Okay, I have a yes, second sir. dream. Can I ask a, a second dream question? Um, I think this is common for a lot of married people. What happens when you dream that your husband is having an affair? Okay. Very common. Um, Which I thought. So it. And Nothing. unless there are other signs that you think he might be cheating, no. don't worry about it. No. If this seems to just be coming out of the blue, you know, don't start going through his phone in his drawers. If, it, if it's coming out of the blue, then what this means, and this is really common, probably one of the top three dreams. Um, it means that there is a third will in the relationship, but it's not necessarily another person. It's more likely another thing like work, golf. Oh, yeah. Fantasy football, the man kids, cave, maybe kids. a new baby, something yeah. that is is taking his time and attention from you, causing you to feel cheated out of that time and attention that you want for yourself. Wow. So yeah. these dreams can be good for you, as all dreams are, are good for you, because it's shining a spotlight on something that's bothering you. So if you bring it to his attention gently and don't nag, and uh, perhaps offer to give up something yourself so that you guys can spend more quality time together, the dreams will stop. I said wake up and hit him over the head with a pillow. I did. <laughs> I was so mad at him. I was mad at him all day. And he didn't even know what he did. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's wow. crazy. I, I always have dreams, like I told you before, and one of my infamous dreams is, and it's really short, but me being on a treadmill. No, a stair climber. Because I'm going up, hmm. and I'm marching. And LaFa um, L.A. Reid, who was the executive of LaFace back in the day, Shaw didn't know that I had a, a record deal with LaFace Records. Who knew? <laughs> back in 94. He comes beside me, and he's always in my dreams. Him and Puffy, for some reason, hmm. are always in my dreams. And he comes beside me on the neighboring stair climber and says, are you ready? And I go, ready for what? He goes, are you ready? We're about to do this. And that's that. Huh, it, okay, it, it I love pops that. Pops in my head, like I mean, pops in my dreams, like every month, somebody famous will come up to me and say, "Are you ready?" Hmm. Okay, these are great dreams. And is it always on a stair climber? Always on a stair climber Excellent. or a treadmill Excellent. of some kind. I'm working out. Okay, so the stair climber is symbolic of climbing the ladder to success. Right. But you're not actually going anywhere on a stair. Climber. Right. <laughs> so, that's my life no, I know I feel your pain uh, but the dream is showing it's giving you an exercise machine to show you that you are working it out 
you're working out the kinks of the things that can go wrong in your career or hold you back. And you're giving yourself a pep talk through the dreams. Are you ready? Let's do this. And it's always a celebrity. So here's how you figure out the celebrity in your dream. You need to ask yourself, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of that celebrity? Is it a song they sing? Is it a movie they're in? Is it a role they play? And if so, how does the title of the song or the lyrics of that song feel relevant to you right now? Or how does that character that they play, how does that resonate with you right now? There's always a connection. You know, it, it, it's a game of connecting the dots. Okay. So that's why some very random, seemingly random celebrity will show up. It's never random. It's always for a very good and powerful reason. I, I've had a couple dreams with well-known people. One was a prophetic dream. It was with Hillary Clinton and uh, I was hosting her. This was before the, the presidential election. I was hosting her and um, my friend from high school, I said, get her some tea. And she gave her the tea and all the leaves were, the tea bag was a mess. I said, you can't give Hillary Clinton that kind of tea. And so I said, I'll get the tea. So it was a white cup and I went and I got, gave her the tea. And when I gave her the tea, it was empty. And my sister said to me, Dr. Alicia Tisdale, who does past life regression, who's lovely and smart, she said, that means that she's not going to win the election. And then I had another dream where I was in a motorhome and Donald Trump was in the motorhome and he said, and I was in Michigan, and he said, go up north, it's safer there. And behind me was civil unrest. This was before he won. What do you think of those? Oh, gosh. I think I'm moving to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always interesting to help a psychic analyze her dreams because it's hard to know when, you know, the dream is commenting on something in your personal life and trying to help you with that or if you're getting some kind of message from Could be both. the people. Um, so I always say start with yourself before you try right. to see if it's a message from the future. That, that makes good sense, though. That does, that makes really, that's so smart. That, Lori, what is the craziest dream you've ever heard? And wh what was the analysis of it? Oh my gosh. Well, I've heard so many. Uh, I would say one that always sticks out to me. It was actually kind of cute after you understand what it means. <laughs> It was a Playboy bunny. I was on Playboy radio and I was um, analyzing a dream for the host. And she had this dream that <laughs> she was going to the bathroom and out came a dead lizard. And she thought, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what else is up there. <laughs> and then she, she pulled out a whole entire roll of paper towels. And as she's examining <laughs> the paper towels that she just pulled out, she woke up. And she had no idea what that could possibly mean. Oh so I God. asked her, I said, okay, so you're going to the bathroom. And that tells me that the dream is about something in your life you're trying to get rid of. Something you no longer need. Something you're eliminating, flushing away from your life. What comes out is a dead lizard. Lizards are cold-blooded creatures. Is there someone cold-blooded in your life you got rid of recently? She goes, yes, my ex-boyfriend. And I said, great. So that's where the paper towels come in because you are now wiping that clean from your psyche. He no longer affects you. Mm. That's literally crazy. defecating him out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, so like you, you, like you're an expert with sex dreams too, right? Yes. Yeah. The, the, the naughty side. Okay, you things. guys cough them up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about like, like uh, bondage, like tying up? If you have dreams about being tied up. Okay. And, and is there sex in the dream? Yes. Kind of like, I mean, I can say that I, I had these after I read Fifty Shades of Grey. So okay. is that something coming from the book or? Okay. Well, let's find out. It, it could simply be you simply safely exploring <laughs> that kind of experience. Yeah. But... At the time of the dream, was there, who was tying you up, first of all? I don't know. I don't know. That's the interesting thing. Was not my husband. Was not an ex-boyfriend. But it, it was a man? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all I need. So an unknown man in a woman's dream will typically symbolize her own male energy. 
And that is the part of you that is assertive and that isn't so emotional about things. The part of you that, you know, has balls and man up and handle, you know, your business. Yeah. So at the time, were you feeling restrained by anything and that you needed to man up and handle something, but you were feeling held back for some reason? God, I mean, possibly it's, it was maybe a year or two ago, whenever 50 shades of gray was big, but I just remember talking to my girlfriend about it and she was like, I had dreams like that too. So I'm wondering if the whole country was having that dream when the book just kind of <laughs> splashed out. Country. Please Facebook yeah. and tweet us if you had that bondage dream. Lori will answer that for you. There you go. I always had dreams about like sex because I wasn't having sex. So I always had like dreams and but just wasn't really acting out on them at all. And I was okay, like, so that's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. There's a few very interesting things about sex dreams that you might like to know. And I, um, and, wait, and I also plan my dreams. So I just want to make sure you know that too. They weren't just random. Like I would plan, oh, this is what I'm going to dream tonight. Oh, okay, good girl. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's so fun. So uh, with sex dreams, we there's a couple interesting things um, as far as sex dreams are concerned with women. Uh, we will tend to have more sex dreams mid-cycle when we're ovulating. We also, after our mid-20s, will actually orgasm in our dreams. You will, your body will orgasm in a sex dream. Um, a lot more than guys will. Guys stop getting those kind of dreams. They don't get to complete those dreams after early 20s. And if they do, it's rare. Um, and also, a sex dream, while they can be really fun or they can be really scary, depending on who your partner is in the dream, they're actually rarely about sex at all. Uh, sex to the dreaming mind isn't so much about a physical union you want, but more about a psychological union you need. So it's really important to pay attention to who your partner is in the dream. You know, a lot of people will get that kind of dream about maybe a coworker, and then they're afraid to look them in the eye the next day. So it's not that you want that person, but there's something about that person that you desire. Maybe it's that they're really good with the boss and you want that for yourself. Or maybe they, you know, have an excellent marriage and that's what you desire for yourself. So it's not about, you know, the physical union, but the psychological union, the merger of qualities and energy. <laughs> well, Lori, you're just yeah, fascinating. You <laughs> you're just absolutely fascinating. And how can people get a hold of you? Uh, go to my site, what your dream means. Dot com. Okay. Singular, what your dream means. Dot com. That's where you can get free instant dream interpretations. It's like having an electronic version of me available to you anytime you want. Okay. That's and awesome. if anyone has any questions for Sonia Marie, our no astrologer, one wants to talk to me <laughs> <laughs> If she gives you a reading, she won't be humping you. I promise. She won't. She won't give you a humping reading. How can people get a hold of you? <laughs> wordlifeastrology.com wordlifeastrology.com <laughs> and if you want some healing michelle michelleebbin.com michelleebbin.com and christy uh christy ferris just uh instagram twitter facebook all of that just christy ferris our movie star Yay. thank you so much for being here <laughs> all of you Lori, you're phenomenal thank I'm, you Lori. and um anybody that wants to get a hold of shar you could go to shar.net Everybody at home, all my visionaries, thank you for being here. I love all of you. And um, keep dreaming and write it down and do what she said. And I wish you all pleasant dreams. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.